Hello and welcome to Inside Sports. I'm your host, Todd Blacksock. March is an epic month in St. Louis for sports. We've got the new city park opening up for the first ever MLS game in St. Louis, and we're on it. Plus, we're gonna head over to the Enterprise Center, home of Arch Madness. They are in their 116th year. So stay with us for this and much more coming up next on Inside Sports. And joining me at the block party is Andy. Andy's a big soccer fan and a St. Louis fan. What are your thoughts with all the mayhem going on here in St. Louis? Well, I was thinking maybe we should send a tape of this to the NFL, but beyond that, uh, it's wonderful. Uh, you know, I'm just enjoying the humanity here. Everybody's loving it. I can't wait for them to play. You know, there's a big party going on at the Enterprise Center with Arch Madness right now. We got soccer going on here. The city is booming, man. I mean, this is just amazing. Yeah, I, I'm really happy to be part of it. A small part of it, of course. But anyway. <laughs> so, how did you get involved and, you know, how did you get tickets? And tell us about your story coming on, you know, coming down here today. I don't even have tickets. <laughs> we, My girlfriend and I came down here to just take it all in. Yeah. So what are your plans tonight? Are you just going to be hanging out in the city? We're going to hang out for a while and, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe if we can get into a place to get some dinner, maybe. But, uh, yeah, just enjoying the party, yeah. So it seems like there's a lot of security going on here tonight. Lots of police presence, so I think people feel safe. The density down here with everybody here, you know, it's just a, a wonderful vibe. And it's a cultural vibe. I mean, I look around, I see the whole world here. <laughs> it's really great. I don't, yeah, in terms of security, I don't feel, uh, you know, unsafe. I was going to say, I don't feel insecure, but you'd have to talk to my psychiatrist about that. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's a perfectly wonderful vibe is the right word, I think, yeah. All right, we're with old school soccer fans right here. What's your name? Hey, who are you calling old school? <laughs> well, I'm That's looking here at your Steamers jersey. <laughs> Suzanne Vincent. Suzanne, and you are? I'm Steve, her husband. Oh, hi, Steve. So hi. you guys are obviously longtime soccer fans. I'm digging on your Steamers jersey. Who was your favorite Steamer player back in the day? Who do you think? Don Ebert. Don, you know, Don, Don Ebert comes to mind. Slobo Ilyevsky, Slobo. the Pocket Rocket, Ty Keel, all those fun guys. Uh, so why are you sporting your Steamer jersey tonight here? Hey, it's for celebrating St. Louis soccer. It's almost come full circle because the steamers in the 80s were the big thing. I mean, they were selling out the old arena back in the day. And, and look at us here tonight on this glorious day. What are your thoughts about opening day here for the MLS in St. Louis? Oh, it's very exciting. Awesome. What do you think? It's outstanding. It's <laughs> so great for the city. So fun. Love the ownership. Excited about the team. Just proud of our city right now. So what about the pregame festivities and all the commotion outside? And you got the Missouri Valley Tournament going on right now. And you've got this. It's a, an epic sports day in St. Louis. You know it. It's as good as it gets. It's as good as it gets. We had a tailgate like a block away. It was awesome. Love it. So what's, uh, what were some of the fun things you did pregame? Um, we had some brats. We had a few beers. What else? We had some brisket. We, we played some football. <laughs> Just fun to be downtown on a beautiful day in March. You know, it seems like there's a plenty of security down here. There's lots of people. And it's almost like the world is here. No doubt. Exactly. It's I mean, great to see downtown St. Louis thriving, you know? I mean, uh, you look around, it's all inclusive. You've got all walks of life, all nationalities, all right here tonight. <laughs> Everybody. It's, I mean, it's... Look at everybody. Look at everybody smiling, having a great time. It's unbelievable. And joining us right now is a young soccer fan. What's your name? Carter. Carter, so uh, you know, are you excited about having soccer here in St. Louis? Yeah, it's a wonderful thing to see around here. 
Uh, Definitely going to come here with my friends after, uh, after this game, too. So when you're coming down, what was the vibe like driving down here? Was there a lot of traffic, parking? How'd you guys, uh, you know, on your way up to this, what was it like walking up and everything? Well, uh, it was very crowded, surprisingly, but there was a bunch of, there was still like a bunch of cars, a bunch of cops everywhere. And we saw some Clydesdales, too, from, uh, from uh, the brewery. Wow. So what do you expect to happen here in the city of St. Louis with this new soccer team? Well, hopefully the soccer team wins a bunch of games. All right, we've made it inside City Park after a long, arduous journey here today. And I tell you, this place is rocking. But right now at Inside Sports, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back with more on this epic day in St. Louis. When we found out that we were pregnant, we were just elated. We were just sitting there waiting for the pediatrician. She said she won't be taking you in as a client. We are a lesbian couple, but she's just a baby. She's the one you're denying the service to. Dad? Just one minute, okay? Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Do clouds take naps? I couldn't tell you. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to Inside Sports, I'm Todd Blacksock. It's an epic day in St. Louis. That's our coin phrase for today. And right now, let's send it over to the Dome in downtown with Melanie Steen as the XFL is back in the loo. Todd, we have been talking about this day for months, and it is finally here. And you see season home opener for the St. Louis Battle Hawks. Now today, the home team, as well as their opponents, the Arlington Renegades, each coming to today's day with a record of two and one but no matter how today's game ends up, the real winners are St. Louis sports fans. The Battle Hawks made their return to St. Louis for the first time in more than 1,100 days, and the fans were ready. the easiest job of anybody out here like tell me what's the energy like today the energy is infectious the energy is amazing the energy was needed so much we've been waiting so long for this but the job is to make sure that when people come in they have the best time and that's our job so yeah it was an endless sea of blue and white for the first home game in about three years with hardly any fans from the visiting team no, it's all home. You know, I don't see I don't see a lot of visiting fans. It's a lot of blue in the crowd, which is something that we love. So. Besides blue and white, some fans really got into the spirit of the game, like Tony Vitale, who was enjoying his very first Battle Hawks game. Tell me about your outfit. I love it. You know what? I just wanted to be a bird, and we're going to kaka is the law, so we got to be a bird. And today, I'm a bird just with the Battle Hawks. They are playing awesome today. We're going to win this game. I know we're going to win this game. We got a lot of money on this game. That's the big thing, but they're going to win this game. Great team. 
great energy. For Amy Mueller, it was a family affair, a time to dance and cheer, and because finally, the Battle Hawks have come back home. Who are you out here with today? I'm with my son, my daughter-in-law, my brother, and my sister-in-law. I was a huge fan for the first season and was very disappointed when COVID hit. Um, I said to myself, you know what, if they come back, if they keep the uh, Battle Hawks name, I'm a fan. If they change it, I'm not. I'm so excited that they kept the name and uh, so excited. I've been, I couldn't sleep last night. The Battle Hawks came out strong in the first quarter. They went into halftime leading by a score of 11 to 3. We're here and we love football. We're a football town too. St. Louis is a football town and look at you see it. We have 38,000 fans here today, 38,000 fans. That's more than any other XFL team. We love football. Let's go, baby. We As you heard, the bird is the word. And when the Battle Hawks are in town, Kaka is the law. Sports is one of the few things that can connect us all, no matter how young or old, male or female, the only color that matters today is blue. Man, I'm so excited. So I was in the same position in 2020. So I came back. I've been telling people I took the blue pill. So I wanted to finish this business with these fans, with this community. And I mean, St. Louis is a football town. Uh, we're like all excited. Every single person, whether you're 70, 80, 8, 5, 20, 30, 40, it doesn't matter. Everyone is thinking the same thing. Excitement, thrills, let's win. And we want to be, we want to be behind this team. By the third quarter, the Battle Hawks had extended their lead by 17 to 3 over the Renegades, getting the crowd more hyped than ever. How does, it, how does this game compare to what we saw three years ago? Oh, this is off the chain. They didn't, they didn't start at where we left off at, and so we're still going to try to take it to the max for the rest of the season. The St. Louis Battle Hawks did not disappoint. They walked away with a win in their first home game of 2023. The final score was 24 to 11. An official with the team tells me the final attendance number set a new XFL record with 38,310 attendees. I'm Melanie Steele reporting for Inside Sports. Hey, thanks, Melanie. And right now, our Inside Sports crew is going to head back over a couple of blocks over to the Enterprise Center and check out the sights and sounds of Arch Madness. <laughs> All right, so the Bradley Braves hold on for the big victory today. How do you feel? I'm pumped! Yeah, let's go BU! Woo! Number one! So tell us about your travels to St. Louis. Um, we're from Peoria, Illinois, and we're happy to be here. Right. When did you know you were going to come to St. Louis? This morning about this morning. nine. <laughs> so it was a, a spontaneity type yeah. thing. Yeah. So uh, what made you, you know, what what was the factor that made you want to come to St. Louis? Just really want to support Bradley. I mean, they've been great all year. We want to see, we, we, we loved how they finished the regular season. We want to see them finish the tournament. And we're with the Bradley Braves fans, the number one seed. Who's your guy right here? Oh, that's number 22, the stud, Ja'Shawn Henry. All right. Are you guys pumped up? Yeah. Say, go Braves! Go Braves! So how far did you come? Because SIU is only about two hours from here. <laughs> 14 hours. How do you like it so far here in St. Louis? Pretty nice day. St. St. Louis is the cleanest town I've ever seen. I can compare it to Philadelphia and Baltimore. So, hey, you guys have got it going on. And joining me now is Eli Hoover, a production assistant here in St. Louis. And Eli, tell us about your, uh, your situation with SIU basketball. Well, I was actually a team manager for the last two years, so I know a lot of these guys at SIU closely. And so it's really fun to watch these guys be able to make it to a Saturday, a chance where they really have a shot to win, and have a shot to win on Sunday too, I think. You know, talk about the journey here to St. Louis. It's only a couple hours away, so it's a great opportunity for Saluki fans to come here to St. Louis to support their team. Yeah, absolutely. It's, St. Louis was a, was a home game for many SIU teams in the late 2000s because it's only an hour and a half away. So many other teams have to come three hours, two and a half hours. SIU, it's an hour and a half. You can make the trip. You can get back home by dinner, and you can watch the dogs get a victory. 
So you don't even have to stay. You can just drive on back home. Exactly. It's, it's, all, it's all a day's trip. So uh, what do you like doing here in St. Louis? Well, I, I, I actually live just across the river, so I get to come out here. I get to eat at the hill. I get to, I get to go to work. I get to listen to the radio. And it's a big sports city, Cardinals, Blues, now City and the Battle Hawks. It's a big sports city even without uh, the NFL and the NBA. You know, what about today? This is an epic day in St. Louis. We've got Arch Madness and simultaneously the first MLS game ever in St. Louis. Yeah, it's a big day for St. Louis. Semi-final Saturday is always a big day. And then you have City. They had a great game at Austin for their first game. They're going to get a victory against Charlotte tonight. It's going to be a huge sports day for St. Louis. I think St. Louis is going to remember for quite a while. And St. Louis SC defeats Charlotte FC 3-1 in the inaugural match at City Park a storybook way to kick off Major League Soccer in the STL. Coming into the 2023 tourney, the Bradley Braves finished first in the Missouri Valley Conference and head coach Brian Wardle was named Coach of the Year. Drake's sophomore forward Tucker DeVries wins the Larry Bird Award as the Valley Player of the Year. In this year's semifinals, number one seed Bradley takes down Indiana State in a tight one while Drake gets by the Salukis of SIU Carbondale. In the championship game, the number two seed Drake Bulldogs blow by conference champion Bradley 77-51 to stamp their ticket to the NCAA Big Dance. Drake forward Tucker DeVries wins the Elgin Award for the tournament's most outstanding player, leading the Bulldogs with 22 points. Your best 
One shining moment.